3.14159265358979323284. The most popular number that starts with 3.14. Pi. 14 of March. This is the day that all people around the world celebrated as Pi Day. At this time in America, they are all celebrating Pi Day. And in this class, we are also celebrating Pi Day. The problem is, nice. The problem is, what if we want to have Pi Pi? Before I go on to make pie pie, you need to understand what pie actually is. Pie is a mathematical constant, meaning that it would be the same, it is the ratio of the perfect circle to its diameter. And because the oval shape doesn't work, because some sides are longer than the others, and so we need to use some other calculus and other coordinate geometry to work it out. For the perfect circles, we have pi, a convenient two. No matter how big or small the circle is, the pi will always stay the same. Because if you expand the circle to what? To twice its original size, the diameter and circumference will also be twice its original. And vice versa. Pi is first calculated who knows how long. At old ages, pi is calculated up to only two decimal places. This was, however, calculated more to an accuracy of seven decimal digits in Chinese mathematics in particular by the millennium time. The best known approximation of pi dating back before the common era were accurate to as close as two decimal places. This was improved upon in Chinese mathematics in particular by the mid first millennium to an accuracy of seven decimal places. After this, no further progress has been made until the late medieval period. It has also been claimed that the ancient Egyptians used 22 over 7 as pi from as early as Old Kingdom, but it was countered by skepticism. The earliest written approximation of pi are found in Egypt and Babylon with about 1% accuracy to the true value. During the Babylon era, a clay tablet created around 1900 to 1600 BC has a geometrical statement that according to its implications treats pi as 25 over 8 or around 3.1250 and in Egypt the Rhine Papyrus paper made around 1650 BC that is copied from a document made around 1850 BC has a formula for the area of a circle that treats pi as 16 over 9 squared or approximately 3.160 Even in the Bible the pi is also has some reference written in that. The Bible stated in 1 Kings chapter 7 number 23 referring to a circular pole as being 30 cubits around and 10 cubits across which means that pi in the Bible is already 3. Even the astronomical calculations in the Shatapata Brahmana applied 339 over 108 as pi or around 3.139, an accuracy of 90,000. Other Indian of the age as old as 150 BC treated pi as the square root of 10 or around 3.1622. According to the book Pi Unleashed by John Unt and Christopher Hainel, 
one of the most pioneering way to find pi is done by, you guess who? Archimedes, the Greek mathematicians who calculated the pi using polygonal algorithm. The idea is to use the shapes of the regular polygon or the geometric shapes with sides that have equal lengths for all sides. According to number file, Archimedes started by drawing triangles inside of the unit circle or the circle with the radius of 1. The perimeter of the triangle would eventually be less than the circumference of the circle. He later drew another three triangles to create hexagon. Then he draw a triangle that surrounds the circle with one point on each side touching the sphere. He later made smaller triangles to create a hexagon that surrounds the circle. He used the perimeter of the outer hexagon divided by the diameter of the circle to find the upper bound of pi. Since the perimeter of the hexagon is more than that of the circle, and so will yield a higher approximation of pi. He did the same with the smaller hexagon that will yield a lower bound of pi approximation. Since the shorter perimeter will yield a lower value, he did this up to 96 sided regular polygon to give the approximation of pi to be in between 223 over 71 and 22 over 7. You could go further with more sides if you prefer and create a closer approximation. So the phi is actually, in other words, the perimeter of the regular polygon with infinite numbers of sides over the diameter across the center of the sphere. The normal regular school will always tell you that pi is irrational, but you don't know why. Now you know why. Be the reason it is irrational is because you can keep adding more sides to it and keep getting closer and closer and closer to the real value of pi, but you will never get to it because you will never draw an infinite sided shapes. It never stopped there. Ptolemy, a Greek Roman scientist in 150 AD, got the pi in his Almagest to 3.1416, which he may have based upon Archimedes or Apollonius of Perga. At this time, pi was developing in ancient China with similar techniques of geometry from pi being 3.1547 around 180 to square root of 10 or approximately 3.1623 in 100 AD and 142 over 45 or approximately 3.1556 in the 3rd century around 265 AD the Wei Kingdom mathematician Liu Hui created a polygonal algorithm and expanded the process to using 3072 sided polygon to obtain a value of 3.1416. Hui later invented a faster method of calculating pi and obtained a value of 3.14 with a 96 sided polygon in a dense to geometric series of successive polygon. The Chinese mathematician Xu Chongzhi calculated that pi to be around 355 over 113. Xu applied the polygonal algorithm of Hui to up to 12,288 sided polygon. I'm so tired to say that number. He calculated that all. And finally obtained the correct value for its seven first decimal digits of pi 3.1415929260 that
that remained the most accurate approximation of pi for the next 800 years. Later in India, around 499 AD, the Indian astronomer Aryabhada used a value of 3.1416 in his Aryabhatiya. Later, Italian mathematicians famous for discovering the golden ratio Fibonacci computed to 3.1418 using a polygonal algorithm in 1220, independent of Archimedes. Italian author Dante apparently employed the value 3 plus square root of 2 over 10, which is approximated to 3.1414. The record of Su, the Chinese mathematician who computed up to seven digits, was never broken until the Persian astronomer Jamshid al Kochi produced a nine six decimal digits of pi in 1424. The number that we count to ten before starting a new unit is called decimals, which is very common nowadays. But sesagesimal means that you count up to 60 digits before starting a new one. Computing up to 9 digits of those is equivalent to 16 decimal or base 10 digits already. He did this by using polygon with 805,306,368 sided polygons. Oh no. How did he do that? It's I'm not kidding. 805 million sided polygons. Oh no. This stood for sure at the world records for 180 years. Then a French mathematician, Francois Witt, achieved 9 digits with a polygon with 393,216 sides in 1579. Then in 1593, Flemish mathematicians Adrian van Rumen obtained up to 15 decimal places. The record was broken by a Dutch mathematician Rudolf van Sulen in 1596 with 20 digits before increasing the records himself to 35 digits. This leads to pi being temporarily called Ludolfian number in Germany before the early 20th century. Then a Dutch scientist Wilbur Snellius obtained 34 digits in 1621. The record was broken again with 31, 38 digits discovered by Austrian astronomer Christoph Grienberger in 1630 by using a polygon of 1040 sides which remains until today the most accurate approximation achieved using polygonal algorithms by hands. The next breakthrough of Pi was the revolutionary improvement of infinite sequence during the 16th to 17th century. One property of rational number is that it can be expressed as infinite sequences too. Still, the infinite series was already invented by the 14th century. Madava used infinite series to estimate pi to 11 digits around 1400s, but the value was improved on around 1430 by the Persian mathematician Jamshid al Kashi using a polygonal algorithm. The first infinite sequence discovered in Europe was an infinite product found by French mathematician Francois Witt in 1593. That is a half of pi is equal to those sum up together forever. The, se the second infinite sequence was discovered in Europe by John Wallace in 1655 as two, an infinite product or things time together 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 forever. The discovery of calculus by a well-known English scientist and mathematician Isaac Newton and a German mathematician Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz in the 1660s led to the development of many infinite series to calculate for pi. Newton himself discovered 
an oxine series to calculate for a 15 digit approximation of pi in 1665 or 1666. In Europe, Madava's from formula was rediscovered by a Scottish mathematician James Gregory in 1671 and by Leibniz in 1674. The new record of 71 digits broke the old records of 39 digits in 1699, which is set by an English mathematician named Abraham Sharp using the Gregory Leibniz series to calculate. This is the first time that the infinite series break the records set using polygonal algorithm. The series were too time consuming that nowadays it wasn't used much. An algorithm that can be calculated much faster was produced by John Machine in 1706 using the Gregory Leibniz series. Machine himself reach 100 digits of pi with this algorithm. Other successive records of for computation of digits of pi, machine-like formula remain the most well-known process to calculate for pi, even until the age of electronic computers, and helped set records for 250 years, like the calculations of 620 digits of pi in 1946 by Daniel Ferguson, which is, by the way, the best approximation obtained without the use or help of a calculating devices like computers and calculators. The series you have seen before may have just been too confusing or too frustrating to even look at, but for math lovers amongst all the soup eaters, all of you, I want to present you with just two series. One a Gregory Leibniz series and another proposed by Nikanta in the 15th century. According to the book Pi, Euler number, an asymptotic expansion by Bowen and Dilscher, the Nik Nikanta's series converges much faster since the Gregory Leibniz old series produced four correct decimal digits of Pi after repeating the series. 500,000 times. Yep, you heard it right. 500,000 times and you just got four correct digits. There are also series that are even faster to calculate the digits of pi, like Machin series and Chudnovsky series. The Chudnovsky series, for an example, produce 14 correct decimal digits per each repetition. Another way to represent pi is the continued fractions like these. Then we have computers. It was a breakthrough after this. American mathematicians John Wrench and Levy Smith calculated up to 1120 digits in 1949 using just a desk calculator. A team led by George Ward Weissner and John Von Neumann that same year reached 2037 digits using an Arctan series and a calculation that took 70 hours of time of hacking the math mystery on the ENIAC computer. The record relying on Arctan series was broken repeatedly. 7480 digits in 1940 and 1957. 10,000 digits in 1958, the year my mother was born, 100,000 digits in 1961, until finally 1 million digits were reached in 1973. The infinite series that are as fast to compute as iterative algorithm and less memory intensive were discovered in the 1980s and 1990s. The Indian mathematicians Srinivasa Ramanujan applied the fast iterative algorithm in 1914 when he published dozens of innovative new formulas for pi and variable for their elegance and mathematical depth as well as the speed of calculating it. This is one of his equations. Based on modular equation, this took less time than most arctan series. 
including Martin's formula. Bill Gosper was the first person to use the series advantageously to calculate pi, setting a new record of, of obtaining 70 million digits of pi in 1985. Ramanujan's formula was applied to the modern algorithms developed by the Bowen brothers and the Chernovsky brothers in 1987. As mentioned before, it produced new 14 digits of pi per term and has been known to help in multiple records of pi calculations, including the first calculation to surpass 1 billion digits in 1989 by the Chudnovsky brothers, 2.7 trillion digits by Fabrice Bellard in 2009, and 10 trillion digits in 2011 by Alexander Yi and Shigeru Kondo. In 2006, PSLQ integer relation algorithm was used by a Canadian mathematician Simon Plouffe to generate several new formulas for pi, where Q is e to the power of pi, known as Joe Fon's constant. Two algorithms called Spigot algorithms were discovered in 1995, opening up a new branch of research into pi. They are named after the spigot because the calculations are like the water dripping down from a spigot. The method can produce single digits of pi without need to reuse all other decimal places following the digits of pi that we want to know, like in the infinite series, or iterative algorithms that retain and use all the digits until the final product is reached. American mathematicians Stan Wagen and Stan Lee Rabinowitz produced Spigot algorithms in 1995. Its speed is comparable to octane algorithms, but not as fast as iterative algorithms. Then another Spigot algorithm was discovered in 1995 too by Simon Plouffe, known as the BBP digit extraction algorithm. This is breakthrough, even though it gives result in hexadecimal digits or base 16, because they can find digits of any decimal places. It is also common that they use this algorithm to verify the new records by converting the last digits of the decimal places of the findings to base 16 numbers and use the number to find random base 16 number near the end of the decimal values of the findings that we want to verify. If it is the same, then the finding is verified. During 1998 to 2000, the distributed computing project PyHex used Bella's formula that is modified from the BBP algorithm to compute the quadrillionth digits of Pi which turned out to be zero. In September 2010, a Yahoo employee ran the company's Hadoop application on 1,000 computers over a 23-day period to compute calculation of the two quadrillion digits of Pi. It turned out to also be zero. Now let's have pi pi. Having 3 pi is easy. Having 0 0.14159 pi is tricky, but not that tricky. Consider this. According to number file, we need to, we now know that we only need 39 digits of pi to know the circumference of the observable universe to the accuracy of less than one hydrogen atom. Since the thicker side of our knife's blade is as small as about 2 mm wide, this means we can't cut any smaller than 2 mm with this knife. Actually, two decimal places, 3.14, is enough. If we calculate the difference between the 0 0.142 and 0 0.14 of the circumference of the pi, that is 90 cm in circumference, or nearly a foot in diameter, you would get the difference of 1.8 millimeters. This means if you use three decimal places of pi pi's and two decimal places of pi pi's, the differences of the two would be too small that is impossible 
to cut the pies with this knife to be any closer to any further than three decimal places of pi. Isaac Newton said himself that after coming up with 15 digits of pi, he said, I am ashamed to tell you to how many figures I carried these computations having no other business at the time. We actually inquire into more digits of pi than we actually need. Actually, we just need too little amount of pi that we already discovered. We can use computers to compute lots of digits of pi to test the computer's speed, but also to beat the records or to feed our own curiosity. The curiosity have led us from where our species begin in Africa out to all over the places like in the present time, conquering the world indeed. If you said that curiosity kills the cat, Maybe this time you need to say, curiosity leads humanity too. And as always, come back later where we will scoop into more science and serve you the knowledge spoon by spoon. And this has been Science in Soup. Thank you.